Right, so this ladder question had a little bit of a twist in it, but all of the previous bits of the question were exactly as before. Should we just quickly add in the forces though? Can someone just tell me what forces there are just to get me up to speed? Is that hand up, Habib? No. Yeah, Amara? Um, for A, yep. right, it's P So you've got a pushing force of P, and I'm not going to put the mu R on in just a second, OK? We've also got then a normal reaction that we have here. Any other forces as well? N. We've got an N force coming out here. Is there any friction at the top? No, because no, it was a smooth one, wasn't it? Um, and weight as well. And is it just W? And it's just W. OK, so for part A, and for part, oh, no, just for part A, what did you do for part A to come up with the reaction of the wall being 3W? I resolved. You resolved, okay, and when you resolved that, what did you get? Um, so left and right, N is equal to P plus mu R. Okay, so you wanted the mu R to be going in this direction. So you got that N equals P plus mu R. What else yeah. did you do? So, yeah? Oh, yeah, there's a, a weight of 7W standing at the top. My, my mistake, sorry. So that was resolving left and right. And then up and down was R is equal to 8W. So we got R is equal to 8W. And then what else did we need to do? Take moments. I did it at A. Okay, when you take moments at A, what did you get? Yeah, that's okay. We're going to just go straight into what the moments bit looks like so that we can get on. Because I think the, ping, the thing that people found difficult was probably part B and part C. So I just want to quickly do part A anyway. So for moments about A, do you want to tell me what your, your um, line of working was? W A cos alpha. W A cos alpha, yep. Yeah. Plus 14 W A cos alpha. Yeah, so that was 7 W times 2 A. So that's, I'm just going to write that as 7 W times 2 A cos alpha equals... Yep, so that's 2a times n, uh, sorry, yeah, n times 2a sine alpha. Uh, hang on a sec. I'm running out of space. So that's n the force times 2a sine alpha. And so the a's can cancel from everything. And so we've got 15w cos alpha is equal to 2n sine alpha. What did you do as the trick there? Divide by cos, so you get 15w equals 2n tan alpha. And tan alpha is 5 over 2. So 5 over 2 times 5 is um, 5. So you just get 5n. And so then w, sorry, 3w is equal to n when you divide by 5. So actually, for these first part that we've got here for showing that the reaction of the wall and the ladder has a magnitude 3w, did I actually need any of these things? No, I didn't need those bits. So although we've got those written down, they're not actually going to be used for this first bit here. This first bit here is taking moments about A. This is where things then get a little bit interesting because it says find in terms of W the range of possible values of P for which the ladder remains in equilibrium. OK, so um, one of the things that we are thinking about is we're trying to decide the range of things that P can be. So all I want you to do is to ignore this question and everything that's written on the board for a second, and I just want you to think about, a literally, someone stood at the top of the ladder, and you're at the bottom of the ladder, pushing against the bottom of the ladder, okay? If you weren't there, the ladder is going to slip, and it's the person at the top of the ladder is going to fall down and break their legs, okay? So you have to, at the bottom of the ladder, you have to push. And we're looking for the range of values, which means we're interested in what is the smallest amount that they can push and what is the biggest amount that they can push. Well, the smallest amount that they can push is they're pushing just enough so that the ladder doesn't slip towards, um, so that the person at the top of the ladder doesn't fall, OK? In that scenario, which is going to be the smallest push, I'll just quickly get my page extender on here because I'm going to need a bit more space. The smallest push will be, if someone is pushing like that, which direction do we think the ladder would slip if it's the smallest push? The ladder is going to slip like this, so it's going to kind of fall downwards. If it's falling downwards, which direction would the friction be? Good, to the right. So let me just quickly get this bit down here. So this is what P is going to be, and this is what the friction is going to be that we've got here. This is the P minimum. 
now I want you to imagine you're at the bottom of the ladder and you're being a bit of a, a rogue and you're deciding that you're going to push the bottom of the ladder as hard as you possibly can so that it's almost going to move. What's going to change if you're pushing the bottom of the ladder as hard as you possibly can this time, but it's still not going to move? The direction of the friction is going to change because you're pushing it so hard that the bottom of the ladder is now, it's like this, but it's about to slip and it's about to start moving like that. So the person at the top of the ladder is going to get pushed sort of closer against the wall. So if it's going to be moving that way, the friction is now going to switch to that way and your pushing force is still over here like this, okay? So let me get rid of that extra bit of the ladder and just put the diagram back in. So we're just going to be able to work out what the value of P is going to be. So in this scenario that we have here, we've still got all of those same forces as before. Luckily, we've already done this bit. We can see this one. Um, let me just quickly remember what these forces were. We had N coming over here, and we've got P and mu R. For the P minimum, we get that P minimum plus mu R is equal to N. Um, did they tell us what mu was? Is it a quarter? I'll just double check. Yeah. Yep, it's a quarter. So here we get that P equals N minus a quarter R. Whereas this one, we can see that you get P equals N plus mu R. So P is equal to N plus a quarter R. This is just because the, the direction of the friction has flipped. And we've just worked out that N is 3W. Pardon? Yeah, R is 8W, which we worked out earlier on, and N is 3W. So here we get 3W minus a quarter of 8W, which is 2W. So we get that P is equal to W. And here we get that P is equal to N, which is 3W, plus a quarter of R, which is 2W. So P is equal to 5W, which means the range of values that P can be is that P has got to be in between W and 5w, and it's allowed to be equal to those ones because it would still be in equilibrium at those particular points that you've got there, okay? So that's why you get a range of values because you have to say to yourself, what, what's the, it doesn't tell me about which direction it's about to slip. You have to think it could slip to the left or it could slip to the right, yeah? Can you see if you see that? Yeah, so if you think about what's happening with both of these ladders, this one is a really small pushing force, okay? Because it's a small pushing force, this big heavy ladder with this person who stood at the top, it's wanting to slide down so it's eventually going to hit the floor, okay? That means the ladder is sliding down here and across here. So if the ladder is going to be sliding to the left, the friction will be to the right. In this case, I should have written that this is where P is a maximum. This is where your pushing force is really, really, really big. The ladder is not going to be trying to slip to the left anymore. The ladder, the base of the ladder, is going to be trying to be pushed along the floor to the right. If something is moving to the right, then the friction would be moving to the left. So if the friction is moving to the left, the friction arrow switches, and we get these two slightly different um, equilibrium sentences that we've got written at the top. This should remind us a bit of when we've had some, when we did uh, forces and friction on slopes, and we talked about like the direction when something was moving to the top, and then when it was at the top, the direction of the friction kind of flipped around because it was then about to start moving in the other direction. So it's all about stopping and thinking to yourself what's going to happen next. It then says, often in practice, oh, by the way, I forgot these should have said 7w here, shouldn't they? And they also should have said w here and here. Often in practice, the builder's assistant will simply stand on the bottom of the ladder. Explain briefly how this helps to stop the ladder from slipping. So if someone is standing on the bottom of the ladder, I'm now going to add like an extra weight at the bottom here. I don't know, however big this builder might be. Let's say this builder was 7w, so this builder is also 7w. And we're just going to try and think about how that changes the calculations. Now, there's three marks here, so you pretty much need to be saying three different things. So for part C of the question, if we added someone else on here, we need to start thinking about what things might change. Are there any forces that you think wouldn't change as a result of adding someone here? N would not change. Why would N not change? Because N is the normal of the surface and the wall. Yes. R is just the ground. Yes. So this normal reaction here would not change. And the reason it wouldn't change is because if you took moments about A, 
the extra force from the builder. would not affect the value of n. And the reason I'm interested in the value of n, because if the value of n is bigger than some of these forces down here, it's going to mean that the ladder is going to slip. So n is not going to get any bigger. But there are some other forces that will also be changing. What other forces will change if someone is stood at the bottom of the ladder? R will change. So the extra force in the builder wouldn't affect the value of n, but r would increase. And if r increases, what else increases? Good. And so would the friction. So this restricts the ladder and stops it from slipping. So it's a three mark question. One is saying that if you were adding something at the bottom, the value of n doesn't change, because when you take moments about this point, it stays the same. Um, and then the second thing is saying, but r would increase, which means the friction would increase. If there's more friction force, it means that it's less likely to slip because it's got a higher friction force. And just as a, a quick reminder, the left and right forces were these statements that we've got here. So if this force stays the same, but this one gets bigger, it just means that there's less force that you're going to have to push to try and keep the ladder stable. Bit of a weird question for those last three marks that we've got there. OK, any questions about this one before we move on? OK, let's 